Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Be For Real. I am Brit. So first things first, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I don't know how many videos I'm in now, but y'all just already know what to do. Don't forget also to turn those notifications on so every time I post a video, you are tuned in, you are here, you are watching, you are not missing a beat, okay? So off of that, it is a cold read. I repeat, it is a cold red. The holidays are upon us and I am hyped because it is our time to show off. Not like we don't show off any other time, but we are showing off in bulk, okay? So we are gonna be letting people know all holiday season to put some respect on our vegan food and we are starting off with Thanksgiving. That's gonna roll over into Christmas dinner and every Sunday in between that is already prematurely set to be lit. Like, we are not playing. now. Granted, you cook like that because you got to cook cook to be having Sunday dinner on point every Sunday. I'm just saying, but that's another story, but I'm not going to keep y'all. We're going to go ahead and hop right into the video. So first things first, we are going to go ahead and get the crabless stuffed mushrooms popping. I think this is actually a great appetizer option. I did put it with the main food, but it is great if you wanted to do like starters for Thanksgiving or for anything so for this i used about three eight ounce containers of baby bella mushroom just because you're gonna have your good mushrooms and your bad mushrooms so you see me here removing the stem and then i'm actually using a chopstick to remove the gills it's not the prettiest sight you know i'm not the best at this i'm gonna be honest but i did what i had to do so i just went ahead and used a chopstick to remove the gills on the inside and then i'm just gonna go ahead and rinse this with water to clean it out and you get something like this i did keep the stems because we're going to go ahead and put that right up in the crab or quote unquote crab we are not letting those go to waste so i'm putting all the stems that i removed into a food processor along with two small onions i'm just going to go ahead and chop this up you can do this by hand. I was just being lazy, so I put it in my food processor to go ahead and chop this up. So in a pan with a little bit of oil over medium high heat, I'm gonna go ahead and saute up the mushroom and the onion until the onion is translucent, and then we're gonna set that to the side. So our vegan crab substitute for today will be the heart of palm. I'm using two cans of this. You could of course fork it up if you don't have a food processor, but because I didn't feel like doing all that work, I just put it in my food processor and chopped it up just until it looks like this you don't want to overdo it you don't want it to be mushy okay so i'm going to go ahead and toss in our sauteed mushrooms and onions get that right up in there then i'm going to also throw in about three tablespoons of nutritional yeast if you see that green powder in the background just mind your business don't even worry about it i had a little mishap with some kelp powder prior and I, I got it right though so just disregard that so to this to get it right i'll be adding a teaspoon of dijon mustard a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar one fourth teaspoon of old bay a teaspoon of vegan worcestershire sauce if you don't have it can't find it just use barbecue sauce instead i'll also be adding three fourths of vegan mayo half cup of breadcrumbs, a little bit of salt to get it right, some pepper, shimmy that on there. And I'm also gonna be adding a husky tablespoon of some dose flakes because that is what's gonna give us our seafood flavor or our crab-like flavor. So you definitely wanna use that. You can also use kelp granules. I made the mistake of using kelp powder the first time and it was a disaster, okay? But we ain't even gonna get into all that right now. Just go ahead, flick your wrist on this, get everything well combined. This is going to be the mix that we are going to be popping up in the mushroom, so make sure it's right. I did shimmy a little bit more Old Bay just for my taste buds, so you could do the same. Taste it, make sure you like it, adjust any seasonings if necessary. So here, I'm just going ahead and popping a spoonful of the mixture right into the mushrooms here. Just also ensure that your mushroom tops are on a lightly greased pan, okay? So we are gonna go ahead and get these all filled. We are going to pop these in the oven at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes. Don't mind me, y'all. I was just taking a moment to appreciate them before they went in the oven. If you know this song, sing along. Oh, 
all right enough of that we are now moving on to our vegan mac and cheese now i do actually have a vegan mac and cheese recipe on my soul food video however i did tweak it a little bit and i ain't want to tweak it and still be having y'all do the old way so i decided you know what what kind of person would I be if I didn't show y'all how I made it now, you know? So here I just have two small onions that I chopped up as well as a husky tablespoon of garlic. So I'm just going to go ahead and saute that up until the onions are translucent. Moving on over to our blender. We got our onion and our garlic already in there. I'm going to pop in one fourth of vegan sour cream with about two to three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. We need to get that in there because it's going to make it right, okay? I'm also going to be adding Adding in a half cup of nutritional yeast that's going to help it be cheesy get the cheesiness in there i'm adding in about a fourth cup of some vegan pepper jack cheese and about a half a cup of the vegan cheddar daya cheese daya daya whatever whatever floats your boat okay i say daya y'all say diet i don't care so i'm also going to be throwing in some thyme a little bit of salt a little lot not too much but it looks like a lot it's, it's enough trust me and we're going to put in a little bit of red crushed pepper keep in mind i will have a full list of the ingredients in the description box below so don't worry don't fret if it's moving too fast i got y'all okay so to this i also will be adding some smoked paprika about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and i'm also going to be using two tablespoons of tapioca starch you can use cornstarch arrowroot whatever floats your boat it does the same thing i'm also adding in about two and a half cups of some cashew milk this is going to complete our cheese sauce. I'm gonna throw the lid on. We are going to blend this on high for two minutes, get everything nice and well combined. So moving on to our noodles, I have 16 ounces of whole wheat noodles. I'm just gonna be pouring our cheese sauce right all up in there. Y'all see that? I know y'all see that. So we're just gonna go ahead and get this all stirred in. We are going to get every noodle covered. No noodle is left behind. I am gonna go ahead and add a little bit more cheese to the pan once I get it in the pan I'm using. Just because I'm trying to get that old thing back, y'all. Like when I ate mac and cheese, real mac and cheese, I just love the cheesiness. And I'm trying, man, with everything in me, I'm just trying to get that old thing back. So I am going to be topping this off with some breadcrumbs. You can or cannot do this. I just like my mac and cheese this way. And I also topped it off with a little bit of paprika. You know, treat it like it's some potato salad or something. But it just, it looks nice. That's how I look at it. You know, it's aesthetically pleasing. And we are going to go ahead and slide this right up in the oven at 375 degrees for a half hour. And bruh. Damn! Listen. That's how making this and tasting this is going to make y'all feel. And shout out to the vegan mechanic too. He uh, definitely put me on to the Baltimore Make Fest that they're having on December 1st. I'm not going to be able to make it as a vendor, but I'm definitely going to make it anyway. So if you haven't heard of the vegan mechanic, check him out. I will have his channel linked in my description box below. Move right along to our vegan meatloaf, quote unquote. I am going ahead and starting off by making a flex egg using two tablespoons of flex meal and four tablespoons of water. We're just going to go ahead and flick our wrist on that. We're going to go ahead and set it aside, let it form. While that does what it needs to do in a lightly greased pan, I will just be throwing in some chopped veggies. This will be chopped onion, chopped mushroom, chopped bell pepper, chopped carrot and some chopped celery so i'm just going to go ahead and throw all that into a pan i went ahead and put mine in the food processor to chop it up because i ain't had time for all that but if you would like to chop up your veggies yourself of course you can do that as well so we're going to place this over medium high heat i'm going to let this cook down for about three to five minutes let the vegetables get a little tender you know let them do their thing so real quick while the veggies are cooking we're going to go ahead and make our walnut taco meat this will be our meat replacement in our our meatloaf i'm just taking one cup of raw walnuts with one cup of rinsed black beans i'm gonna pulse that up once that's pulsed i'll go ahead and add the flax egg in we get our veggies up in there it's going down okay we is getting it done we is not we're not playing today so just to complete our loaf we will be adding in about a half a cup of 
old fashioned oats. I have a cup of some breadcrumbs. I'm gonna go ahead and place two tablespoons of some tomato paste, a tablespoon of vegan Worcestershire sauce. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. If you don't have the vegan Worcestershire sauce, you can sub that for barbecue sauce, okay? To this, I'm gonna get my shimmy on with some sea salt and some ground pepper. I am gonna post this down. I use the dough option on my food processor. If your food processor does not have a dough option, I will just post it down. You don't wanna post it. If it's a little chunky, that's fine. You don't want it to be mush, but you want it to be a nice doughy type consistency. So here y'all just see me getting my parchment paper together. I'm using a one and a half quart loaf pan. I'm scooping out the mixture, placing it right into or right onto the parchment paper. And we're just gonna go ahead and press that out right into a loaf and boom. It is right to go. And once it's ready for the oven, you will be throwing this in the oven at 375 degrees for 30 minutes. So while our vegan meatloaf gets its life together in the oven, we are going to go ahead and make our mushroom gravy. I'm going to toss in some olive oil. I'm going to also toss in a half of a chopped onion a strong tablespoon almost two tablespoons okay of some minced garlic as y'all can see i like garlic very much so we are going to cook this down over medium high heat until our onions are translucent this should be very familiar that's all we've been doing i ain't never cooked so much onion and garlic in my life so afterwards we will be tossing in eight ounces of mushroom i just got some white mushrooms white button mushrooms nothing special i just went ahead and tossed it in there you can use whatever mushroom you like i also tossed in two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce so we're going to get that in there you can of course use coconut aminos liquid aminos whatever you would like we are going to cook this down for about 10 minutes constantly stirring it keep your eye on it but you basically want to cook this until all the liquid evaporates all right all right so once this is cooked down we will be going ahead and adding one fourth i use one fourth of whole wheat flour so we're just going to go ahead and add that this is what's going to help thicken our gravy up so we're going to add that in there i tried to whisk it look at the failure look at look at that so i went ahead and got a spoon because i realized like what, what what are you trying to do here so i promise y'all it's going to get it's going to get bad before it get better so right here, it don't look too good, but we're going to add the spices. I'm adding sage, rosemary, some thyme. We're going to get this together. Then I'm going to go ahead and add in some veggie broth. Now, I use a cup and a half. You could use more or less. It depends on the consistency you would like. I also was not cooking for a lot of people. So if you are cooking for a good number of people, I would suggest doubling or tripling this recipe. So here I'm just going ahead and stirring in the spices. Only about 30 seconds, not too long. And I'm going to go ahead and add that broth a little bit at a time. Okay? You don't want it to clump up. You want it to be smooth. You want to go ahead and dissolve that flour. So just make sure you are adding it a little bit at a time stirring it up and it stir it up add it you know repeat so that way you can get the consistency that you're looking for and in the end you should be left with something that looks a little something like this so this was the consistency that i like not too thick not too thin but good nevertheless so go ahead and give this a taste once you're done if you're making this just to make sure it fits your taste buds adjust any seasons if needed and boom you have gravy so we are also going to now make the glaze of our meatloaf so i'm just going ahead and using two tablespoons of tomato paste two tablespoons of maple syrup boom i'm also going to add some spices so we're going to do some garlic powder some paprika i'm also going to add a little bit of salt in here you know i got the shimmy the salt in there can't leave the salt out so just a little bit and we're going to go ahead and stir that up i did go back and add just a touch more of some maple syrup just because my glaze was just a little too thick for my liking so i just added just a tad just a little bit so we're just going to flick our wrist on that stir that right up and then once our meatloaf is done for the 30 minutes we're just going to go ahead and nicely spread this all over the top i did use a spatula so that i could nicely you know you know 
I could go ahead and spread that out very nicely here. So once that is on our meatloaf, we're just going to toast this right back in the oven at 4 15 minutes. And then once it's done, you do want to let it rest for about 15 minutes. So that way, when you cut it, it's well formed. You don't have no issues. It's nice and solid. Okay, and it's good to go. So, short story time, I was watching that chocolate vegans video where she made her potato salad. She added a little something something on the end and threw in some coconut bacon. So I was like, you know what? I want to try some coconut bacon. I never tried it before. So I went over to her channel, found out how to make this coconut bacon. I want y'all to head over there too. I will have her channel as well as the video linked in the description box below because she said, and I quote, Y'all better try this. So that's exactly what I'm doing, okay? And it bang. So go over there, head over to her channel. After this, go say hi to her for me. And if you are watching this, hey girl. And I know what y'all thinking. Well, where are the coconut bacon going? What, what are you doing with it? So I am gonna go ahead and saute up some garlic because what we gonna do right here is we gonna go ahead and place some green beans, some string beans, whatever you wanna call them. I already went ahead and snapped the ends off just like, you know, our moms and grandmoms and taught us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and saute this up in a pan for about five to 10 minutes. This is up to you about how soft you want them or how fresh you want them. But I wanted to keep some of the nutrients, you know, just a little bit. I wanted to keep as much as I could so I did not um, cook these down southern style. I just went ahead and put a little salt on them, saute them with the garlic, and I'm gonna go ahead and top them with the coconut bacon. Boom, we have a side. So if you made it to the end of the video and you are grown, welcome, because we are now gonna make a apple cider sangria, yes, for the culture. So I'm just gonna be placing in some sliced apples, some sliced lemon. I'm gonna throw in some pomegranate. Yes, we are, you know, sprucing it up. I'm going to throw in about a half cup of that. We're also gonna need three cups of spiced apple cider. We're gonna throw that right up in the picture. I'm also gonna be using Parmesan apple brandy as well as the regular Parmesan brandy. Yes, come on now, grown folks juice. So I'm gonna be throwing about three fourth cup of the apple brandy and about a half cup of the regular brandy. If you are making this for a group of people at this point, you will wanna cover this, throw it in a refrigerator and let it chill. And once it's ready to be served, that's when you wanna top it off with the sparkling cider. So in the end, I did place the entire bottle of the sparkling cider on top of this nice mixture here to go ahead and top it off. If you would like to have this version, you could of course omit the liquor. You could do three parts of the regular spice cider and one part of the sparkling cider and boom, you got yourself a vegan drink for the whole fam, okay? Y'all, we made it to the end of the roll. I want to thank you guys so much, 110% appreciate it. I know it was a lot of moving pieces, a lot of cooking going on in this video. So be sure to check the description box because I will have the recipes timestamp so you can hop a real to the recipes that you are actually here for okay i ain't gonna do y'all like that i did also make biscuits but the video did not transfer technology is not always our friend okay so i will still have the recipe in the description box below for anybody who wants to make garlic curd biscuits i got y'all but i just want to point out for one second how many mushrooms i made y'all see y'all see me look at look at the mac and cheese it just didn't even make it y'all it didn't even make the barely half of it half of it it was six mushrooms on that plate if y'all replay this back it was six mushrooms on that plate terrible okay i ain't saying no names and i ain't pointing no elbows but it wasn't me so thank you guys again for watching i truly appreciate it happy holidays to you guys happy thanksgiving if you have time off enjoy it with your family your friends and i will see you guys in my next video